Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for August 8th, 2022. It's the time of week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Jeff and Adafruit sponsors me to work on CircuitPython, which is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support me, Adafruit, and CircuitPython, consider purchasing your hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. And that uh, link should also be in the um, doobly-doo. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. The meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes document, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. To receive these notifications or to participate in the meeting, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. As I mentioned, there's a notes doc to accompany this meeting and its recording. The document contains timestamps to go with the video, so you can uh, use the document to help you skip to the parts of the meeting that interest you the most. And uh, after each meeting, then, we post the upcoming meeting's notes to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord, which is where you add your notes anytime during the week. Uh, it's actually a great idea. I did not do that this week. A great idea to add your notes throughout the week so you uh, remember to report on what you've been doing, who you want to thank in hug reports, and so forth. Anyway, so the structure of this meeting, uh, we've got five parts. After this is community news where we take a preview of the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. It's all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community and beyond. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka, a statistical overview of the entire project, a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're up to individually. Next up, is the fun part starts. Uh, that is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing and uh, to take the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is status updates. It's an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. You can take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the week since the last meeting, as well as what you hope to do um, or work on until the next meeting. And uh, stuff outside of CircuitPython is always welcome. We like to understand a little bit more about the people we're working with. So if you have an anecdote or uh, something that's going on that you want to share, just in your life, um, please feel free to do that according to your comfort level. Anyway, the fifth part, which uh, we don't always have, but I think we have some items today, is called In the Weeds. This is the time for a long-term discussion, uh, excuse me, a long-form discussion, uh, something that doesn't fit within status updates. Uh, please add that to the notes document as soon as you can, and we just take those in the order that they've been added. And that covers how the meeting will go. And so with that, I will tell you about community news. First up, the uh, web workflow. We have started to enable that for the ESP32 family of microcontrollers in CircuitPython. Of all the great microcontrollers on the market today, ESP32, the original, no suffix, has been left out of CircuitPython due to not having native USB, which is what allows it to act like a flash drive for code. Scott and Dan just merged in the web workflow for CircuitPython 800 Alpha and ESP32, which means that it's now incredibly easy to start working with chips like the ESP32, which have excellent Wi-Fi networking, but do not have USB mass storage. And there's a link to the Adafruit blog on there. Um, next up, um, we of course are still very much looking forward to CircuitPython Day, August 19th, which is next Friday. Uh, it's been designated the snakiest day of the year. The day highlights all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware. There is a um, blog post that maybe Katni can link us to with the schedule, and the schedule will also be there within the newsletter. So a great reason to um, subscribe to the newsletter to get the schedule this week. Uh, next up, um, I believe the person's uh, Discord username is Lee, has been talking about extending CircuitPython, the Fibonacci adventure. Before actually contributing to CircuitPython, Lee Atkinson thought to try a toy extension, a non-hardware related Fibonacci generator for the Raspberry Pi Pico. The process is excellent for learning the methodologies on how to add to CircuitPython. And then a community project. 
the Baby Monitor Haptic Mod, adding a motor driver and BLE to a VTEC Baby Monitor to enable alternative outputs like haptic feedback with CircuitPython. And there's a link to hackaday.io in the notes doc. So, in case you haven't gathered or heard this before, the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are on adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. And adafruitdaily.com is also where you need to head to sign up. It highlights the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. And as Anne would tell you, we keep this all completely separate from any Adafruit account you may have, and we do not spam you. We just use your email address that you submit on Adafruit Daily for one thing only, and that is the newsletters that you want. But also, I said it was community run. So uh, we depend on your contributions, whether it is a project that you did yourself, one you saw go by and you want to make sure it gets recognized because it's super cool, you can edit next week's draft on GitHub and submit a pull request with the changes. And if GitHub is not your speed, you can also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And a big shout out to Anne. Um, thanks for uh, doing the newsletter. We know you were up to stuff uh, this week and this weekend, and we appreciate that it is still going to come out on time and chock full of stuff. All right, turning to the next section, we've got the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. And uh, Scott, give me a signal in the channel if you uh, need me to do the um, core section for you. Otherwise, I'll hand it off to you in a minute. Anyway, overall, uh, and just to note, these results are one day old. Uh, so apologies if this makes me misrecognizing someone's contribution. There was just an error on the overnight run of the stats gathering, but I could take um, the one from Sunday instead. So across the whole project, we had 19 pull requests merged from 13 authors. And uh, a couple of names that I didn't recognize are Iron M and URFDVW, who I learned is called River Wang. So thank you for your contributions to CircuitPython. We had uh, five reviewers, uh, thanks to those people who GitHub officially recognizes as reviewers, and also for everyone who comments on pull requests uh, with feedback, uh, helpful feedback of any kind. That's what enables us to continue making high quality changes to CircuitPython and the libraries. And the last overall number is issues. We had 17 closed issues by 17 people, by seven people, and 22 open by 19 people. So net we are up five issues, but what's most heartening to see is uh, just the large amount of uh, activity by the community. So thank you for that. And next, I will ask Scott to tell you what is going on in the core of CircuitPython. Take it away. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so for the core, we had 17 pull requests merged from 12 different authors, which is quite a lot. So thank you to all of our authors. Uh, we had five reviewers. Uh, also a couple more than we normally have so thank you to those extra reviewers we have 19 open pull requests uh, the oldest is 325 days old i think i actually just fixed it though so i actually should take a look at that myself uh it's a good reminder if you have boards uh there's a lot of these pull requests are for additional testing on boards so please take a look at those um, otherwise thank you to everyone who's getting pull requests in uh, Issues-wise for the co core, we had 15 closed by 5 people and 12 opened by 9 people, so we're net down 3, which is good, uh, for a total of 556 open issues. Uh, we have 5 active milestones, uh, 51 open issues on 8.0, I think it's down to 48, um, which is good, and those are the ones that we're kind of gearing up, the Adafruit funded folks are gearing up and looking at. Hopefully this week we'll see a lot of those closed. Um, we track milestones as a way to know what issues we've triaged, um, and it doesn't look like there are any not assigned a milestone, but I will double check today. Anyway, and uh, that's the numbers for the core. All right, thank you, Scott. And mm -hmm. next, I will ask Katney to tell us about the libraries, of which there are 300. <laughs> yes. Um, so this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries. Uh, that's everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few extras, including the community bundle and our cookie cutter. 
Across all of those repositories, we had two pull requests merged by two different authors and two different reviewers. And that leaves us with 27 open pull requests. There are two closed issues by two people and 10 open by 10 people, leaving us with 667 open issues. 177 of those are good first issues. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including a list of the open pull requests. So if you'd like to uh, help out reviewing, you can check those out. And a list of open issues. If you're new to everything, Good First Issue is a great place to start. We uh, have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, and we're always available on Discord to help out. In terms of updated libraries in the last seven days, there were th three updated libraries and no new libraries. Uh, so that's, we, oh, and as, as Jeff pointed out, we have reached 300 Adafruit circuit Python libraries. Um, the number that is usually in the um, newsletter is a combination of the community libraries and the Adafruit circuit Python libraries. So that number is, is 361 at the moment, but 300 of those are specifically written uh, by Adafruit and all the folks that have helped out with that. So thank you to everyone who contributed to that to get us to this point. And that's what I've got. Thanks, Katni. And Melissa, I know that Blinka isn't what you're really spending your day-to-day -day time on uh, at the moment, but would you like to tell us the stats of Blinka, please? Uh, yeah. Uh, so for, oh, let me find it in the page here. Uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi and other single board computers, as well as MicroPython. And uh, this week we had zero pull requests merged. Uh, there are currently four open pull requests. Uh, there were zero closed issues uh, and zero opened issues, uh, leaving a net of 79 open issues. There were 9,553 PyWheels downloads. Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and there are currently 89 uh, supported boards. So this week, really not any activity. Well, don't let it. that scare you off from trying out Blinka because it's nice, solid software. It's so close to done, which is one of the reasons it has relatively low activity. Exactly. Was somebody else going to say something, or I thought I heard another voice? All right, well, moving on to our first round robin sections. Uh, it, the first one is called Hug Reports, and let me just make sure I'm saying the right stuff. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everybody a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting, uh, I will read off your notes for you as I get through the list. All right, so uh, first up from me, a group hug. For me, last week kind of turned into a vortex where I was largely alone with the camera project and I didn't interact a whole lot with you folks in Discord. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to be hopefully emerging from that a little bit right now. And also, speaking of camera world, a hug to Tenet for leaving me what looks like a very useful um, review on that pull request to add the camera. Next up, I have notes from C. Grover, who's text only but has a long overdue hug to Ketney for graciously and enthusiastically helping with a local pre-commit issue for the community bundle that I was convinced was not local. Congratulations to Anne and Amy, and a group hug to the team and community. And next up is Dan. Go ahead, please. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, thanks to you, Jeff, for exploring the edges of AsyncIO and finding issues, issues over this weekend. Um, Thanks to Eva, who uh, we gave her a bunch of guide cleanup to do, and she's started to work on that. A lot of things like mentions of, like, this doesn't work with CircuitPython 4 and stuff like that. Things that we need to update. And Mazel Tov to Anne and Amy on their wedding. That Great. Okay. That's it. All right. And next I have a couple folks to read notes from. David Glad, whose text only writes creation to Anne Engineer for a Twitter trending wedding, which is almost a tongue twister. Uh, a hug for Lady Ada and Tanut for giving me a reason to try time travel. And tell the younger me to acquire an Odroid Go. 
again, another one for Scott Tanute for an old style deep dive stream to me and also to Dan H for sure for trying to have uh, CircuitPython also on the first generation Feather ESP32 S2. Dan and I have been trading that one off, so you definitely owe thanks to both of us, and I would say largely to Dan, um, just in, in my personal opinion. Anyway, next up, Foamy Guy had to miss the meeting today, but has a group hug, as well as a hug for Scott for doing the deep dive stream last week and helping with troubleshooting the ESP32 S3. And next up is Katney. Hey, so my first one is congratulations to Anne and Amy, um, as everyone else has also said. Uh, but as many congratulations as possible is, is the best. Um, an equally long overdue hug to C. Grover for persevering through a GitHub and Git issue, uh, the pre-commit one they were uh, saying earlier. Um, to Eva for zooming through a ton of learn-related tasks to make guides better for everyone. I come up with things for her to do, and she gets through them very, very quickly. Um, so we have uh, had to dig around and find more things to do, and um, she has been zooming through all of those as well, but they're all well-needed updates. A hug to everyone who's been giving me CircuitPython Day events or descriptions for events so I could get a schedule going, and a group hug. All right. Thank you, Katni. Next up is K-Match. Thanks, How Jeff. Uh, first, congratulatory hug to Anne for getting hitched, and thanks for sharing photos. Uh, the two of y'all look like you're really both over the moon, so to speak. Uh, thanks to Foamy Guy for organizing and selecting the Hack Tablet winners. And uh, particular thanks for, to Lady Ada and PT for the surprise unboxing on Ask an Engineer and for handling shipping of uh, the items for the giveaway. And lastly, uh, thanks to all the folks that submitted to the hack, ta hack tablet drawing, and uh, especially to the winners. Can't wait to see what y'all do with these. And uh, it's not too late. There'll be two more up for grabs, so feel free to keep submitting. Okay, thanks. All right. Thanks, K-Match. Feel free to drop a link about how to submit uh, your entry right into the text chat for those who haven't seen it yet. All right, next up, Liz, also known as Blitz City DIY, writes a hug for Tectric for kindly reviewing and assisting with my first PR for a CircuitPython library. Yay! And a hug to Katni for her work so far in planning CircuitPython Day. And next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. Uh, first up, I want to give a uh, congratulations to Anne and Amy, and also a group hug to everyone else. All right, thank you, Melissa. Now I've got a couple to read off. First, Mark, also known as Gamblor, writes a hug for Retired Wizard and Tenut for helping me get the web workflow going and a group hug. Paul Cutler, uh, who is text only today, has a hug for Katni for all the CircuitPython day planning as well as a group hug. And then Tammy Makes Things has a hug for Katni for the CircuitPython day planning and a group hug. I can't uh, quite make out what the typo is there, so uh, somebody should fix the typo in her name because I just can't quite do that right this second. All right, uh, Scott, you are up next. Hello. Okay, so first, uh, hug report to Foamy Guy for hosting Deep Dives Now and letting me guest host. Uh, hug report to Retired Wizard for more web wor workflow testing, keeping me very busy. Um, hug report to Katni for squeezing me into the CircuitPython Day schedule. And a hug report to Maker Melissa for the temporary redirect suggestion for the CircuitPython.local redirect. All right, thank you. And to round out the section, I will read the notes from Tectric, who has a hug for Katni for all the work planning CircuitPython Day, a hug for Liz for their first library contribution, as well as a group hug. And that rounds out uh, hug reports, except I feel bad now that I did not specifically call out Anne, so congratulations on your happy day. Um, I wish it had worked out for me to make it, but it was not to be. And with that, we will move on to status updates. Status Thanks, updates yeah. is our time to sync up on what we're doing. I'll start, and then just like before, we'll go through the list alphabetically. Uh, when I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting as well as what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is, an also, this is also an opportunity to provide quick trip, quick tips and tricks 
relevant to what people are working on, but if a discussion looks like it will be longer than just a moment, we will move it to the in the weeds section. And with that, um, so um, last week I worked on the ESP32 camera, which um, is open as a pull request, but there are some finishing touches to go on there. This week, I hope to do that uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday. Then I'm out on a vacation from Thursday until next Thursday inclusive. And I realized as I was writing these status updates, I also need to do a little CircuitPython day prep. So I may have to squeeze that in while I'm on vacation. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, and that's what I'm up to. And then I will read notes from Seagrover, who's text only. Uh, Seagrover has finished the conceptual encoding portions of the coffee scale learning guide. Need to incorporate the physical build chapter before putting a bow on it. After spending a couple of hours punching the proverbial paper bag, I successfully deployed a TCA 9548A IA2C multiplexer stem QT board for a dual load cell project. As a result, I developed a draft TCA 9548A theory of operation document for folks like me. The draft TOO could be used to supplement existing multiplexer documentation. Now that the weather's promising to be cooler for at least a few hours each morning, I'm determined to sequester out in the workshop to finish two 1 14th scale retro TV console cabinets that resemble my dad's prized 1960s RCA behemoth. The tiny cabinets are sized to fit a 2.4 inch TFT feather wing and RP2040 feather. No 3D printing or CNC, although CAD was used in the design phase. So it sounds like a woodworking project there. And next up is Dan. Okay, thanks. Um, so last week I got, um, I worked on ESP, plain ESP32 builds some more, and I got um, builds that have no PS RAM support working. There was some problem with the way that things were enabled and disabled in the ESP IDF. So I did the Huzzah 32 board as a sample. That's a feather, or the, I'm just using the feather Huzzah 32. Um, and if other people would like to clone that and copy it and for some other board, change the pin definition, that kind of thing, that would be great. You can, you can add more boards now. Um, I did a whole bunch of reviews. And now I'm going back to uh, reducing the number of 800 bugs. We have like 48 open issues for 800 right now. And I'm continuing to look at various issues that people have with ESP32 SPI, um, network support, MQTT, and things that having to do with different requests, kind of just keeping track of some open uh, forum threads and issues. All right, thanks. All right, uh, next up, I have a couple of folks to read notes from. David Glau writes, I took my Pygamer with me on vacation and texted the Octopus game from Foamy Guy and reported on my findings to him. And Foamy Guy writes, still out of town, back to normal schedule on Wednesday of this week. Tinkering with size and memory metrics. Have created an actions task to print the size of an MPY file and the strings within it. Thinking about ways to do on-device memory size testing. And finally, diving further into dot clock display module this week and attempting to troubleshoot a current hard fault. And next up is Katni. Jeff. Yes. Last week, I published the PCF 8574 guide and created a schedule for CircuitPython Day, finally. Um, and it was a short week, so that was pretty much all I got done. Today so far, I created a separate blog post with the CircuitPython Day schedule, updated CircuitPython.org uh, for the CircuitPython Day banner on it to link to that, and uh, went through all of my miscellaneous uh, tasks and consolidated them in my list. This week, all of the miscellaneous, and there are many miscellaneous. Um, I need to QA uh, a bunch of templates that Eva did for um, feathers that didn't have them, and then continue work on CircuitPython Day plans. Once I'm done with the miscellaneous, I'm going to be learning to use the Nordic PPK2. And then once I've got that figured out, add low power templates to the feathers from which they are missing. And in terms of the basement project, long story short, part one was completed by the deadline. The end of last week was a mad scramble, but we managed to finish everything that we wanted done. And part two will begin in September. That's what I've got. All right, and next up is K-Match. 
Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so this week, I uh, worked on the touchscreen inputs and looked at using an interrupt pin. So I reduced the amount of time spent polling for touch events, which I was previously doing by I2C. Uh, it seems a lot faster and leaves a lot more room for drawing. But now things move too fast and uh, move a lot between refreshes, so I need to better understand how to control the animation speed versus the actual refresh rate. Um, and next was work and finding a dead end on my bowling training aid, uh, but that's progress. I tested several time of flight distance sensors and none are either sensitive enough or fast enough to reliably catch a 15 mile per hour bowling ball passing in 30 milliseconds. So, um, uh, but actually in the process of doing that, I realized that these sensors actually give a signal quality uh, response uh, that actually goes a long way in weeding out junk data. Okay, and this week I'm gonna procure some ultrasonic distance sensors and temperature and humidity sensors so I can uh, calculate the speed of sound in air and try again. So uh, the reflection time for a distance of one meter is about five milliseconds, uh, which is a two meter round trip. So that may actually work. Uh, and in fact, relative to infrared time of flight sensors, it's probably less susceptible to the ambient conditions. Uh, particularly the variations in lighting and the bowling ball colors. So we'll see how that goes. Thanks. Thank you. A deceptively difficult project, I think it turns out. All right, uh, next up is maker Melissa. Hello. Um, last week, it was a short week for me because uh, I was out sick a couple of days. And uh, I've mostly been working on code.circuitpython.org uh, changes to add web workflow. I finished revising the various dialogues and got uh, the serial terminal working with web workflow. I also have it reading and writing as well as listing directories uh, that have that working. And I uh, got make, dir, and delete added, but I haven't tested that yet. Uh, this week, I'm going to finish up adding web workflow at a macro level. Uh, this will allow me to at least test bugs in web workflow while Scott is available. And then after that, I'll start working on the myriad of miscellaneous things that need to be wrapped up before a PR can be submitted. And there will also be lots of testing and debugging. Um, I'm also going to need, uh, I'm going to start working on um, prepping for my live stream for CircuitPython Day. And that's it for me. Thank you. Uh, next up, I've got notes to read from Tammy Makes Things. Last week, she did some thinking about CircuitPython Day and writes, I'd like to join in any group activities going on and also do a CircuitPython Day Twitch stream of my own. Uh, but last week, I was buried with work for my day job. This week, she plans to iron out what exactly she's going to do for CircuitPython Day and is still buried with work from day job, so don't know what else yet. And next up is Scott. Hello. Okay. Um, logistic stuff. I'm out on Friday this week. We're going uh, on vacation or for the weekend. Uh, Thursday next week, I'll also be out uh, watching Ari. Uh, Friday is my last day for Friday next week is the last day. Uh, my last day in a while. I'll be taking 12, le 12 weeks of paternity leave. So if you do have. Uh, Stuff you want to talk to me about, uh, please let me know um, so that we can talk about that before I'm on leave. And then last week it really was a smattering of bug fixes, <laughs> so uh, I'm glad I'm able to read, read this off because it's a long list. Um, I added BLE and execution status to the title bar. I switched to a temporary redirect for circuitpython.local that shouldn't be cached at Melissa's suggestion, so thank you Melissa. I fixed the S2 and S3 USB with the latest web workflow changes forget how I broke it, but I did break it. Um, I fixed pasting a bunch of characters to the C3. I fixed the SD card showing through the web workflow. Now it won't. Um, it'll always be the CircuitPy drive. I enabled web workflow on the ESP32 and added the QDPy ESP32 and the Odroid Go um, to CircuitPython as well. I made the ESP32 pin never reset happen at runtime based on the module, just like the IDF determines the pins. I saved some space on the SAMD21, uh, like 750 
bytes or, or more by using basically my copy of live GCC. I just like literally copied it off of my installation and put it in the repo and linked to it and it looks like it's working. Um, I added a UID line to boot out dot text, uh, which enables uh, devices like Thani to read the CircuitPy drive, get the unique ID, and then read the unique ID over serial to match the two up, um, which will be cool. I fixed the BLE workflow, which had been broken when I changed some of the workflow stuff for the web, so now BLE workflow works again. Um, I removed the enable and disable auto reload functions on supervisor in favor of supervisor.runtime.autoreload. Um, asterisks, this is a breaking change. Um, it's what the oldest PR actually is trying to do. Um, the advantage of doing supervisor runtime auto reload is that you can read the state of it, not only set the state. So it's a pretty advanced API, so I just removed the old version. Um, so hopefully it doesn't cause too much trouble, but just let's be aware of that, uh, that that's happening. I tweaked the title bar and the scroll area uh, by making the scroll area kind of like shift underneath the title bar so that the bottom line of the scroll area is complete. Um, and then there's a number of things on my radar that I have opened in tabs, but for this week, I, Dan had the idea of instead of showing the uh, error type, um, adding the error file name. So I'm going to take a look at that. And then there's a number of other bugs around web workflow that I'm going in title bar that I'll look at this week too. So similar to Dan looking at the 80 list and really trying to, to hack it down. I think we, I think we have a goal of doing at least a, another alpha, if not beta, for CircuitPython Day for 8.0. So I think that's a good goal. Get get as many bugs down as we can, and then we'll do another alpha or beta release. I think the difference between the two will be if we expect breaking changes. Still, we should do an alpha. If not, we can do it as a beta. Uh, but that's it for me. All right, and then uh, Tectric, are you able to speak for this one, or would you like me to go ahead and read you out? I will take that as go ahead and read. So uh, last week, Tectric was on vacation. Not much got done except soaking up the sun. Uh, this week, Tectric plans to move all the libraries from setup.py to pyproject.toml and catch up on some things I missed last week, including touching up some new libraries and some PRs and issues I was tagged in. And that is it for status updates. Thank you, everybody. We love uh, hearing what you're all up to. And um, it's also nice to have the, the chance to be on the talking side, too. Um, all right, and with that, we are going to head to the In the Weeds section. I'm just not sure whether um, we are going to do this now. Um, so. It says uh, Tectric, who is likely not present, uh, but if Tectric is out, Katni can read. Okay, Katni can read and talk about it. That's what I'm doing. Yep. I read it now. Go ahead. All right, thanks, Joe. So um, it would be helpful to have a small one. I'm just going to read what was written here and then explain it. Um, it'd be helpful to have a small window of time free of merges to the libraries so things don't get lost during the move to pyproject.toml since it will be pushed to main branches. This evening at 9 p.m. Eastern works for Tectric, and uh, I think it would normally be were, or, um, unlikely to have merges during that time anyway. But if we could set um, 9 p.m. to midnight uh, and give Tectric that time to get everything switched over, that would be great. Um, I wanted to mention it in this meeting because, or wanted Tectric to mention in in this meeting because pretty much everybody who does merges on the libraries is present here. Um, so starting at 9 p.m. Eastern to midnight uh, Eastern, please avoid doing merges on the libraries and then feel free to start again tomorrow. And that is pretty much all this is about. All right, is, does anybody have a question or comment about that? Hey, Katni? Yep. Katni? Yeah. Are you going to do some kind of a guide as to wh what goes into uh, uh, Pi Project? Um, yeah. Um, had not thought about it. That's something that Tectric would have to do because he's the yeah, one that put the effort into learning it. Um, I will, can look into it. Will the cookie cutter be doing the right thing well, after this change? 
Yes. Okay. Oh, good. That's that's why I was concerned because I was thinking about creating a possible library, and I didn't want to get caught not doing it the right way. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Charles. Thank you for info. All right. Um. So that's yeah. That that sums that up. Um. All right, Keith, Keith asks in the text asks. chat, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, will you need a couple of folks on standby to help if something goes awry? Um, that's that's up to Tectric um, if, uh, if he wants folks around. Um, so I will let him answer. All right, he said he's good to go. Um, and I think I think that sums everything up. Um, we'll look into a guide and cookie cutter will definitely be doing the right thing. Yeah, I haven't learned pyproject.toml really either. So, I mean, it's a great opportunity to just learn a little more if that's the kind of thing you're interested in. So, yeah, for sure. Um, and it turned out to be a lot simpler than we thought it would be because everyone made it sound like it was complicated. So we just assumed it was. <laughs> And then it turned out it really wasn't as complicated as, as everyone seemed to feel like it was. So that was a good good find um, in this whole situation. But cool. I will update the notes, and um, I think that's good to go. OK, thank you, uh, Katni and Tectric, for doing that work. Katni, I just, uh, one of my reasonings for, uh, for uh, being interested in it is I have a big project that I'm working on that I'd like to not have to use set uh, it, it, it cr created several libraries of which I do not want to create setup dot pies and it so sounds like the uh, uh, pie pro pie project dot toml might be uh, an alter interesting alternative yeah, it turns out that setup.py has been sort of deprecated for a while, but a lot of folks still use it. And the pyproject.toml is the new, it's not that new, but the new-ish way of um, doing it. So uh, okay. uh, that's good to know. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Yep. Which makes it worth learning. All right, well, let's wrap this up. Uh, this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for August 8th, 2022. I want to thank everybody who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. And if you're outside the U.S., check out the resellers link at the bottom of that page. Uh, the video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held on Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, and I believe that makes it August the 15th. Uh, the meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can be asked to be added to the Circuit Pythonistas role on Discord. And with that, we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.